Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining this segment of Real Estate Roundup here with Beyond Real Estate with Jalik. And in this segment, we wanted to address this information coming out of Black Knight, which is the number of properties in forbearance or foreclosures has increased by 700% year to year. Um, but what does that really mean without context? Welcome to this week's episode. I'm Nick Gumper. With me as always is Jayla McKenna. And this week we're joined by Claudia, who's an expert in the personal credit world, which I think will be an interesting aspect to, to touch on. How does a, a foreclosure affect credit? Welcome to Beyond Real Estate with Jaylik, the podcast discussing parenting, real estate, and business. Every week we go in depth on how to become successful in life and business. Nick, take it away. Let, let's dig into that topic of forbearance, foreclosures, and what it really means for that to be up 700% uh, on a year-to-year -year level. So I would like to just start this segment off first and, and give people content because 700% sounds like a very daunting number and share some hard numbers. We're at about 165,000 homes that people have dealt with a foreclosure scenario, right? Which is a dump into our housing market with what they call distressed properties or foreclosed homes. Sounds bad because 165,000, that's that's a lot of families that that's it's a few. displacing. <laughs> um, last year, to give you some context, we had a total of 65,000 in total, right? And so we're not even, we're, we're just barely, just over the halfway point of 2022. So again, to give one year rewind, it sounds bad. We're, we're about to triple that, right? With that being said, in 2010, when foreclosures are at their peak, we had 1.6 million. That's a number that I have not heard a news channel, an individual share with people yet is, hey, by the way, in 2010, we had 1.6 million distressed homes out there on the market. So let me repeat, today we have 165,000. In 2010, we had 1.6 million. So for those that say, oh my God, this is so many homes and we're gonna see home prices just drop incredibly and all these hit the market, it's like, hold on. We're coming from an all-time low of 65,000 last year by itself. And again, this year, do we have more? 100% we have more, but not enough to negatively affect our housing market. Like, unfortunately, we're always going to have those individuals that lose their job, choose to move, um, get displaced for various reasons, sometimes beyond their control, sometimes within their control. And you're always going to have a segment of our population in that space. Um, Claudia, with that being said, can you shed some light on what that process of a foreclosure means for based on what you know with the credit space? Okay. So when it comes to credit, um, anything that starts falling behind, of course, it's going to start affecting the credit right away. Um, we see that the two areas that really hit hard on a credit report is when you fall behind on a mortgage payment and when you fall behind on an auto payment. So when you make good positive payments on those two, you only get one point per payment per account, right? But if you fall behind, then it's gonna drop anywhere, depending on how high your credit is, is gonna drop anywhere from 20 to 120 to 150 points within one day payment. So what we see a lot is once people start going into the foreclosure aspect of things is when they stop making the payments on the property and they don't talk to the bank or they don't, they're not getting the appropriate help. So not only do we see all those late payments on those accounts that are going to affect the credit, but then it depends how they're going to finish it. The good thing is that a lot of that does get removed from a credit report. And you have to remember that it's not the actual item per se, that it's like, oh, it's a foreclosure, it gets removed or it doesn't. We have to follow the guidelines that the credit agencies have that's, that are very specific um, that if it wasn't verified correctly 100% before it was placed on the credit report, it has to get removed, right? If there's errors on how it's being reported, it gets removed because of that. So yes, do people have a second opportunity to get back on their feet after they've gone through a foreclosure, after they've gone through short sales or all those late payments on those accounts? Definitely, yes. I, you know, our company, myself, in the past 18 years that we've been doing this, we've been able to help thousands of families that were in that situation back in 2010 recover from that and be able to start all over again. I always say the one beautiful thing that the United States has opposed to the rest of the world is that it gives us second opportunities, second chances to get back on your feet when there's been incidents like this that happen that you lose 
you know, your, your home, which is the largest purchase you, you've ever made. So yes, it does. It can be uh, repaired. It can be reinstated, not reinstated, but it, you can get back on your feet after you've done a foreclosure. Good to know. Jay, any, anything to add in this portion? The bigger one is Claudia touched on it, how important it is to make those on-time mortgage payments. Uh, that's something that lenders and underwriters also look like, look at. So you're making sure that you can make that payment and that you are uh, reliable at doing so. So, uh, another big thing, um, those numbers when it comes to forbearance as well. Yeah. A lot of people did go under forbearance and we all understand why that a lot of people missed work and stuff like that. Most people are honestly caught up nowadays to, uh, as well. So the big difference between what happened during the pandemic and what happened when everyone was losing their houses is tons of people have equity that was built up, which is just something that wasn't available to them. And after making three on time payments to your mortgage, if you're currently in forbearance, just know you can then refinance to get completely caught up and have your slate wiped clean, uh, so to say. So definitely a different situation. Uh, those numbers always sounds good. Whenever it's like 700%, it's like, well, what does that really mean? It's like, eh, it's seven times, but, but that's not as, that's not as like eye catching, like, whoa, seven times. It's like, oh, that's not too much. But when you're like 700%, it's like, well, not, not too much, not too much. Fair enough. I was just going to piggyback too and, and shed some light. Well, what's happened between 2010 and specifically 2021, it's been a downward trend. So it's not as if we went up and down from the millions ish. Like once we topped out at 1.6, it's been a steady decline into 2021. So again, that sheds some light with regards to, well, Nick, did we get back up to the millions? No. Like we've always come down off that number. And like Jalen said, for those that entered forbearance be right when the pandemic hit, 80% of people are out of it now. Like you said, they, they're, they're in good standing. So there again, you say, well, what about the extra 20%? Again, every single year, a portion of the economy is going to be hit in some shape, way, or form. And it, it just is what it is. As, as unfortunate as that is for those individuals, overall, it's not enough to negatively affect our housing market. And that's just the reality of the situation. Yeah. So there, there's that piece of it. Um, and that, I just want to piggyback on the lending piece because why are we seeing record lows for the amount that are foreclosing? It's because lending practices have improved dramatically since the yeah. early mid 2000s. So again, people aren't put in as risky of situations without being able to prove, hey, they can deal with that payment long, all things remaining equal uh, versus that just wasn't the case in the mid 2000s. So yeah, I still see people all the time with that 7% interest rate. And you're like, when did you get this? And it's like, oh, I got it in the mid 2000s. It's like, what? You haven't refinanced in the millions of times since where you would have saved a couple of hundred bucks a month, but you know, it. Is what it is. So young. I bought my first house at 8%. There you go. Well, we're, yeah, we're what do you mean? Gonna, yeah. I mean, historically too, it's like 6% is not a crazy interest rate uh, that we yeah. have today. Is it the 2% that we saw a few years ago for like a 15 right. year mortgage? No, but 6% historically. Yeah. Back in the eighties, it was like 18%, 20%, not a, not an uncommon sight. Um, yeah. Now, Nick, talk to who's going to be able to make the first moves with this information. Cause having information is great. Yeah. Knowing how to actually act on it is even better. So to expand on the forbearance space, some people would argue, well, if you have individuals losing their jobs, that's, that's what you're going to see first hit the market. And I would argue really, it's going to be investors that are going to be adding to that 165,000 total quickest because they're going to have the renters. Right. In, in a recession scenario, uh, which we're, they say we're on the brink of, and we've just entered, who's going to be affected faster, the person that owns their home or people that are renting their home. And usually you're going to be those impacted. Most are going to be the renters, right? They're the waiter, waiters, waitresses. Um, a lot of people just working home depots, Walmarts, those type of industries that are the backbone of our country and inevitably get affected the most, you know, when recessions, uh, come to fruition, right. They're the ones that are, are a lot of times first losing their jobs. Right. And now investors say, okay, if I have six renters that just told me they've lost their job, whatever that is, I'm going to dump those six properties, which is going to add to our foreclosure total faster than Jalen specifically losing his job. Why? Because Jalen losing his job 
needs to not pay his mortgage for approximately three months before that foreclosure process even starts, which it then takes about another three months before Jalen's house even hits the market as one individual. So I hear that. I don't know if it's a debate per se, but it's a question definitely of who's going to affect things the most. And it's not going to be the individual house, a homeowner, because again, I just painted out that picture. It's going to take about six months for that home to actually hit the market as, as a foreclosed property versus again, that, that investor that might own 20 of them. And he's like, crap, I want to offload that. Why would he do that? Well, they want to control their balance sheets. They want to control what their positives and, and negatives are when it comes to their tax preparation right? And be able to even that out. So an interesting piece of that forbearance world of that distressed property world, that uh, something to think about and be aware of for those of us that are involved in the real estate space. So Jake, on that note, anything to, to add with investors or, or individuals? Yeah. Just know, just know what your options are. Don't sell your home if you don't want to just because you're in forbearance or you're, you're afraid of stuff like that. Talk to your lender or talk to a um, real estate agent to see exactly what your options are before you decide to burn the whole uh, house to the ground. Maybe literally in some instances. <laughs> Don't do that. That's arson. Um, and, you're, and you're still on the hook for the mortgage. Like they, they never tell you that part. So yeah, just, just be aware of your options. We've been talking education, education, education um on the on monday's episode and now today we're saying again be educated know how that impacts you that's all i have nick deal well there you have it thanks for tuning in on this week's real estate roundup a part of beyond real estate podcast please give us a five-star rating but only if we've earned it and follow the podcast wherever you're listening and share with anyone you know wanting to start investing in real estate or just buying a home in general so we'll see you on Friday for our business bookends, where this week we reveal our favorite tech to use in our business. And if you want to add some great tools to your tech tech stack and build a more efficient business, you won't want to miss it. So we look forward to seeing you there. Hey, thanks again for listening. If you want to hear more of Jalen McKenna, Colorado's mortgage dad, and his take on the Colorado real estate market or just mortgages and mortgage news in general, check out the links below. Also, check out the links below for more information on products, books, or references made in this podcast. And please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share.